I started in uh, November 30th of 1965. I worked here the last 25 of the first 100 years. <laughs> they were the years of the most rapid change in the hospital. The lowest uh, portions of the basement foundation are about five feet thick. Oh. A and, uh, and this isn't oh. built like these buildings that they can put a few di charges around, you know, and then they'll blow these certain places up and then the whole building kind of sinks down. Mm -hmm. This one, if that plane that had hit the Pentagon would have hit here, the, the, the amount of damage would have been considerably less than it was at the Pentagon, which was built during World War II and so the upper roofing areas of the Pentagon, you can't really tell it because it all looks like it's whatever brick or whatever it is, but they're all wood construction and that plane, it caused a huge fire, you know, that passed through all of those areas. Well, let's go on in then and we'll... Uh, this is a day room, just like I was telling you, every so often you'd have a room that kind of bulges out. And uh, one of the things that I want to show you is the floor. All of the main, all of the floors in the big building here have that same floor, all put in, I suppose, by hand labor. Uh, can you imagine how much that would cost today and mm -hmm. think of how long it's lasted? <laughs> yeah, and the load bearers, for example, are, uh, I don't know if it's a steel, it's probably a high grade yeah, cast iron. But the one lady we had on one tour who was quite uh, well uh, learned in architecture said that the, the way these hold up the building is the way they built, build the skyscrapers. Uh, but this was done real early. You can't see the top because they've lowered the ceiling here. You know, all the buildings in the old days, that was partly for summer air conditioning because they had high ceilings so that the, air, the warm air, you know, would move up first and then for a while you'd have comfort until it all filled up, you know. But anyway, that was the idea. Uh, the other part, the so the construction of the building is brick on the outside and it has uh, uh, steel, uh, uh, iron uh, uh, supports and then iron beams. Are and then many, I think the uh, other floors are poured concrete. And then also, uh, one other thing about the building, uh, it was c completely fire safe except the first area that was built. Remember the w in the west end, the, the way to the left. And that is uh, c fire safe except for the roof area, which has wood construction, just that one section. And after that, they decided on having uh, cement in the roof. So this is a massive building. So now we want to just walk back and let you just mosey in some of the rooms. Some of these would give you the idea of a patient room or a couple people in a room. And sometimes, I don't think on this area we have any large bedrooms, do we, Bill? I don't think. Uh, no, not here. Not, not here. And some of this was modified for the college, you know. Like uh, these aren't the old, uh, some place along here we got something that has an old wooden door on it. Was yeah, that it's in the bathrooms on the very end. Oh, okay. Well, uh, then you can see what the original heavy wooden doors, these probably were all put in when the college was here. Uh, in all of the early years, the one of the biggest costs wasn't employees. People that were well enough, they would go to work. Many of the men worked on the farm when we had the big farm, and the ladies would probably work in the kitchen or wherever, that, that, uh, uh, under supervision, those that could, the, because work was always considered a, a useful part of the treatment program. For our centennial, we, we uh, hired a person to write uh, a play about the history of the hospital. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was called milk and rest, which were two of the early things they prescribed, warm milk and lots of rest. <laughs> there weren't any me those medicines then, you know, no. that type of thing. Although it's interesting, this hospital was, was started through state legislation as a hospital to practice homeopathic medicine. That's coming back today. That's all of the natural drugs uh, things that is not something that you manufacture, but mm -hmm. and so th and so they did uh, work in homeopathic medicine in the early days, and it's interesting how that's come back. And we have the the the, the places that have the extra foods you like to buy and the other things. Now, one lady was uh, asking me about uh, the the uh, public address system that was made here by our uh, 
electricians. They took uh, speakers out of uh, junk pinball machines for downtown. I don't know where they got all the stuff, but they cannibalized stuff and they built this whole uh, PA system, not only in the building, but out on the grounds, you know, and all over. And I think w way back when I started, it would have cost like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 if we would have uh, built one, and I don't think we had more than a couple thousand dollars, if that, in the whole thing. Some of our people would work on area farms. They would be, they would sign a contract uh, with our, bi our patient office. And another place that hired our people was the turkey plant at Pelican Rapids did a Wonderful job, a wonderful community for helping take care of people that were handicapped. It, it's a good town, that Pelican Rapids. There you can see just a small portion of all the stuff, I suppose, that's going to be sold. <laughs> Maybe you need a desk, but you have to have a pretty big room to get one of those in. This shows you what the early construction of the doors were pretty thick. Uh, we're going to go down in the tunnel now. Uh, he, here's how you make a staircase that wasn't here in the first place. You just take part of the hallway and move a wall out and then put a stairway in. <laughs> See, pretty, uh, you know, Mr. Hoffman figured out that it was much better for us to have our own construction crew. Yeah. That, I mean, that, th and they were worked for us for years. They, they cared about the patients. I mean, they, they got to know many of the patients. I, maybe some of them even helped on the construction. And, and they just had all these nifty ideas, you know, how you could do things. And, uh, and uh, we were really lucky to have them. All of our people were in the treatment uh, staff. And it was a community designed to not tear people down, but to build people up. We do live in a society that likes to do a lot of tearing down with the terrific competition that we have. And here the idea was to produce all winners. Now, a couple things to know about the tunnels here are, you know, back when this building was built, they didn't have the big earth moving machines, you know, that we have today. A lot of it was hand labor and that. So if you saw a picture of like the first section on the other end of the hospital after it had been opened, you would say, that thing is standing way up in the air. Well, what they did is they built these basement areas where they, uh, maybe the ground level was only up to here and then they added all the ground afterwards and brought the lawn up to, so it was easier to add the lawn than, oh, to, to, than to dig. See, you didn't have to dig out then, you know, you maybe dig out a little bit. So they were clever, and then the other thing I want to mention is that the uh, purpose of the tunnels is to carry the utility pipes, the electric wires, and all of the things that are needed to all around, not only in the main building, but to go to all the outlying buildings you know, that are on the campus because it was heated from one central uh, steam source. Now we're, we're uh, in the basement of the uh, northeast section of the main hospital. That was the area we were in upstairs was the east detached, and this is northeast, so we'll walk through the basement, and then I'll tell you when we get to east center, that would be another section, all connected. And I got to tell you about one of the rooms here because, you know, I always get asked, I told you that before, that uh, uh, is this the dungeon? Is this where everybody was locked up? Uh, nobody's ever been locked up here. There's storage rooms primarily, some places where they had coffee break rooms. But I remember one room, I don't know which one it is down here anymore, but we had one patient who loved to collect and work on antique watches. And so M Dr. Patterson had given him a, his room in the basement probably in this section. And he had all of his watch stuff, uh, machinery, uh, uh, work m machinery tools and his watches in there. He had his own key for the room so that nobody else could, uh, could take any of his watches. And you know, the other thing he liked to do was he liked to go out in front of center where we were all standing, but across the road there were wooden benches there. And he would sit on the bench and he would talk to God. And you know, I don't think that's so strange, you know, because my minister does it every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, and so he was just a little ahead of the minister there. <laughs> the other thing that the uh, tunnels are used for is uh, people w would go through the tunnels to get from one area to another.
So wherever they would go down, then they would push the food carts or the laundry carts, you know, or whatever it is, through the tunnel, then back up the elevator and into the unit. So very useful for communications and, and moving things and, and everything. I, mean, I think if you added all the tunnels up, they would probably be several miles worth of tunnels up here. They, they go to all the, all the buildings on the campus. Just the property. Oh, yeah, but do you, you know where the government center is on the yeah. other end? Uh -huh. See, that was our, I'll, I'll talk about that later on, but that's our geriatrics unit when it was built years ago. That the tunnel, the tunnels go all the way over there, for example, to all of those buildings I was showing you on this side and to all of the buildings that are on the back side. So it's all over. Uh, it's many, several miles of tunnels. Okay. Now we've entered the basement of the east detached section. Remember, there's three sections on each side of center. There's always the detached one, then the next one, and then the one right next to center. And this one would be east detached. Wh where we're at right now, if, we're, if this was an interstate highway, this is the north-south-east-west intersection. So everything that way is south, that's north, and then the young lady said, but you can't go anywhere there, there's a wall. It never was there when I worked here. <laughs> no, no, they walled off a couple areas so, because they don't, aren't using them, and it's the easiest way to supervise the area, but it shows you how adaptable it is to, to the mason's touch, you know, there. But if you went this way through this center tunnel, you would go to all these buildings that are on the back side of the campus. Like they're mainly industrial buildings, like the kitchen, uh, the food uh, story uh, warehouse, and, and uh, the power plant, which we don't use anymore because the garbage burner produces the steam. But all of the industrial things were on the back, all connected. So now we'll go this way, we'll go south here. You could play two basketball games in here. There's a door back here that goes all the way across and makes it into two separate rooms. It's not used anymore, but that was a regular theater, you know, movie projection area. Years ago now, we would run uh, regular commercial movies. One of the things I always tell them about here is that we have a parquet floor. That's those little square blocks of wood the only other one that I know of is the Boston Celtics. Really? They're a little better than we are at basketball, but we're probably better at taking care of people than the Celtics are. The, the wo wonderful thing was the spring carnival, and in addition to our own patients, we invited all the handicapped people from the community, like from group homes and and uh, what, uh, schools or wherever they were, and they all came to this carnival. They had like carnival booths all the way around and, uh, and food, st food stands, which were really popular. And then after we got done with the booths that we made, we gave them to the Catholic nursing home at Breckenridge, and they had their own carnival. We would give them the booths. And, and so it was a wonderful time and see people having a good time. We had a lot, of, we worked a lot of carnivals. Yep. I would sell tickets out yeah, there. Ticket <laughs> I'm, I'm expert at that. <laughs> Another thing they were done w when we would have public meetings or if all the staff would come to a meeting. And then on the weekends, see, there were like church services in here. The, the chairs would be put up like uh, Father Brenny had, uh, I think, Catholic Mass well, like on Friday evening for one. I don't know if they had more than one. But anyway, they had their, their church times. And I remember a public meeting here one time that Rudy Purpose's brother, uh, was a, a state senator from up on the Iron Range. And so uh, they were, his committee was having a meeting at the hospital, I suppose, about our complex. And uh, our, employ our employees didn't have a real, they didn't agree with some of the things that, uh, that Senator Perpich was, was saying. So our, one of our psychologists got up, his name was Richard Qual, and he said, uh, George, that was George Perpich, I think, George, he said, we, we played together at the Hibbing Community College on the basketball team. They were teammates. And he said, you know, see this basket here, see? He said, you, miss, you were missing the basket then, he said, and you still are. <laughs> 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 see, 
Then we're going to go in the kitchen dining room area there and take a peek, and then we're going to go up into the tower part. Good water. Now, Bill, I don't think you serve any meals in no. here anymore. Everything is no. taken to the units. That's right. But uh, we used to have, uh, oh, I'm sure 300 people were served yeah. here or more. Uh, and the interesting thing was, you know, when, when I started here, we had an employee. Were, were you, when you started, you didn't get to see the employee dining room. The, the employee dining room was down there, you know, on the other side of the kitchen. You know, there's a danger in having an employee dining room because then you have the temptation to make that food a little better. We had the first state hospital in the United States to hire an advocate. And an advocate's job was to listen to the complaint of the patients and then to go to bat for the patients. And you know, th th they decided at the Brainerd State Hospital, they had a meeting of superintendents there from all, all the state hospitals in Minnesota uh, that they were going to hire advocates, first in the United States. Two or three superintendents went home sick after dinner. They were so threatened by the idea of somebody going to bat, you know. And But uh, I, I got to tell one more about Bill. We called him the wild man, but he did know that this place would not have to be here if it weren't for the patients, and that our job is to help the people that come here. And you know, we had a, a, a couple that wanted to get married. They were higher level functioning people on the mental retardation unit. The lady had the good organizational mind and the young man had good legs. So he could push the wheelchair. And they would go down to the public library, used to, not where it is now, it used to be like one block from Main Street uh, down at the end of you know the street that comes up here. And I would see him pushing her down to the library in her wheelchair. Well, Bill fought the bureaucracy for a long time, and he got it through. And we had a wedding here, first one in history of, of, of that situation. And uh, the volunteer fund, I'm talking about this, our volunteer fund, the one I would raise money for, we, we paid for their honeymoon at the Holiday Inn here. <laughs> and and uh, then they went to the Twin Cities, and they, they, were, uh, they got to live in a... Uh, apartment house for handicapped people and and she became a homemaker and he and he had a job <laughs> and and, th and that success wouldn't have happened without the advocate anyway I just want to mention that before they walled in this one area for a self-service canteen in the basement of the of the gymnasium building we had a barber shop beauty shop and a, a bank for for residents would work and they would for where they could cash checks and or get you know it's like a bank and and a, uh, a library library, <laughs> library. we had a whole community center down there one of the young ladies asked me if there are any ghost stories <laughs> uh, if, uh, uh, does the hospital have any ghost stories I don't, I can't think of any, but I, we did have bats in our belfry. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But it would be, when we get up into the fourth floor area there, we'll show you that circular staircase. Yeah. Yeah, that would be wonderful one to have in a ghost story. We're going to go into uh, an area that's uh, is been remodeled in the fashion that the existing area where we have patients still is. So this would be the newest looking uh, piece that we've got. We're just going to look at a uh, part of it so you get an idea of what currently we reside in. And then we're going to go into the oldest part, I guess. The, the, <laughs> the tower area. Uh, one of the questions that we had was about reading in the paper they hear about, oh, we can't use that building because it would have to be brought up to code. Well, I'm assuming, uh, Bill, the code means uh, individual bathrooms, for example. Uh, actually, this building would be very good for a minimum security prison. The only reason they won't do it for that is it has nothing to do with the code. I mean, they'd have to do that anyway. But the building isn't designed so they can operate it with minimum staff. That's, right. That's the big kickback because in all the prisons they build now, they always have so that people in a certain area can look all different ways, you know, and kind of supervise a whole big area. A and because of the cost of employees, I mean, that's the issue. It's really too bad because it would make a very good, for example, we've got a, we have a me meth epidemic going on in this country right now. 
this could be a facility that could treat people that have that problem. I think, like, I, I'm thinking that it's going to be by almost spring before there won't be any people in here, and then it will, even if they, even if they would uh, decide to tear it down, they don't have any money to do that okay. right now. So I got a feeling. So what are we doing? Do we write our congressman or what? Well, uh, you, you, one thing you could do. Did you sign the yeah. petition? Yeah, that's a that would be good for right now. One of the reasons we're having the tours is because. Uh, we want to keep the interest in the building. But these are lovely staircases. There's one on each level here, the four levels. And uh, it cost a million dollars to build the main hospital, but I don't think you could buy the staircases for a million. One young lady we had on one tour said she'd like to have an apartment up here. Yes, I would. You would too, Mike. You could play basketball. You could dance out here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the question came up, what was this used for? I call it the hospital hotel. Visiting doctors from the Twin Cities would come up by train, and then they would maybe be staying here a few days for some of the cases they were working on, and then they would be provided with a place to live. But not too long ago, I had the first social worker here and his wife. They must be in their 80s now. And he wanted to see his room, which was that one. And then he told me that the room across the hall, this is quite interesting. You have to really know to get this stuff. <laughs> across, across the room was uh, the second floor. That's the first floor up from the main floor. Always was Dr. and Mrs. Patterson's uh, home. They had the entire second floor. Oh. Yeah, and, and so he, he said that the lady that had that sleeping room in the 1950s when Harold Gray was there was uh, Dr. and Mrs. Patterson's maid. And I'm sure she wasn't a state employee. I think she was employed by Dr. and Mrs. Patterson, but they provided a sleeping area for her. 